All right. Christine will be back in a moment, but I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting um, for the Historic Preservation Board. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it to order, and if everyone would rise and face the uh, flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Stephanie, would you run roll call, please? Yep. Member Horning? Yes. Member Campbell? Present. Member Bryan? Here. Member Lamug? Here. Vice Chair Stark? Here. Member Jones? Here. Chair Clark? Present. And Member Estill? Present. And Member Day will have an excused absence for the record. All right. And we have a quorum. Thank you very much. We have a quorum. All right. Uh, we are, our first item of business is uh, a request in regards to scheduling the meeting in July. Stephanie, do you have information in regards to that uh, for our July well, meeting? Or is that Christine? That's Christine. Be Christine. Oh. <laughs> yes. So I am here to request that you all have a meeting in July because as of now, the schedule was that you would not have a meeting in July and you would have not have a meeting in December. Um, we do have applications for review. So rather than have the applicants wait all the way till August, that's the reason for this request. So if you all could make yourself available for that second Tuesday in July, I'm sorry, um, July, can you 12. look at that calendar? July 12th, um, same time, 6 p.m. That would be wonderful. If not, then that means our next meeting is going to be August 9th, and that's how long we'd have to keep the applicants waiting for. Oh, I can be available on July 12th. Actually, let's do it the easy way. Is there any member that can't be available? Yeah, I, I'll be out of state. Okay. So so we have two, two, two of our members that aren't... Um, do you want to check with, did you talk with the member uh, day to whether or not she'd be available for? She didn't advise, but I believe if, even if she wasn't available, we'd, we'd still, still have quorum. a quorum as long right. as we have everyone else. Well, if that's the case, let's go ahead and schedule it for the second Tuesday of July, which would be July 12th, I believe. Mm -hmm. Now, will that just be one of the six o'clock meetings or will we be meeting early again? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming there's no workshop. You're just asking for the standard. I was just asking for the standard meeting, but you know me. If you all want a workshop, I can. Oh, gee, my my schedule's so packed. <laughs> okay, so yeah. we'll just have the regular meeting and we'll resume with the workshop in August. Oh, let's, that that would that sounds nice. Let's let's <laughs> let's, let's stick with the uh, with the workshop. You know, we're all going to be a little tired from the July 4th celebration. Uh, all right. So that being said, uh, let's go ahead and. Uh, I'm assuming everyone's had a chance to review the April 12th uh, work sh uh, session minutes and the actual uh, meeting minutes, and I'll open the uh, open for motion in regards to the minutes. I'll move to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. All right. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor of approval of the minutes as written, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. You have approved minutes. Uh, according to the agenda, we don't have any old business, so we'll start with uh, new business. And the first item of new business is item A, certificate of appropriateness, major for 1116, or excuse me, 1106 10th Street. Okay. And with this item at 1106 10th Street, we have a re uh, request to replace exterior doors, and this request would require a change to door dimensions. The replacement doors um, would be 36 inches by 80 inches, uh, down down from 39 and three quarters by 82 inches. That would effectively decrease the opening size. So the question is what happens when that shrinks down because the existing wall surface is a brick. I have actually had a conversation with the property owner prior to the meeting. The other issue in the staff report, and I could go through the staff report, um, is the material of the doors being proposed with steel. The doors on this building were originally wood. Presently, they're not wood, but originally they were. So there was a replacement to steel in the past. 
after conversation with the property owner, and so this is going to be up to the how the chair wants to handle this, um, we did have a discussion about if the door dimension stays the same and the door is done in wood, how I could sign off on it without any vote required from the board. If the property owner wants to confirm that he's okay with that, then I would just recommend that you just pull this item from the agenda because we can come to um, an approval outside of the board. The recommendation right now is for denial. Understood. <laughs> so that's why pulling it and working with the property owner would be preferred now that we know that is something that he is amenable to. I'll open the floor to you, sir. If you'll state your name, your address uh, for the record. Dr. John or Jay Cullinane. I uh, own uh, 1106 10th Street. Uh, and the reason I was doing this in the first place was somebody took the pins out of my door, which, or try to anyway. Um, and so to make the building secure and my patient records secure, I wanted to flip the outside opening doors to inside opening doors, put the hinges on the inside. That was all my whole uh, objective. Okay. Now, originally we had uh, beautiful wooden doors on it, which I loved. But when I bought the building 20 years ago, I was told they had to go and I had to put steel doors on them. I'd love to go back to the uh, wooden doors. So if we can do the wooden doors with the, the same sign, I'd be thrilled. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to do that if there's no objections. But I need to do something to comply with HIPAA. Understood. Um, from the standpoint then, Christine, if he goes to a wooden door and remains with the same opening, technically that's staff review and we'd be approval and wouldn't even need anything from our board, correct? Correct. The major thing on this that triggered going to the board was the material being steel and the decrease in the opening would actually change what the appearance from the street would be. Yeah. I mean... Obviously, if the applicant is uh, willing to do that, then we can, I mean, we could just pull the, pull it here off the floor now, and we wouldn't even need to vote on it. So um, that's up to you, sir, in regards to how you want to do that. I would love to go that way. Well, if that's the case, then uh, I think we have uh, a resolution as to item A. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we'll go ahead and pull item A off, and... Uh, our applicant will work with Christine and staff to uh, find a solution that doesn't require him to come back. The next item on the agenda was item B for 1122 Kentucky Avenue. And remind me, I believe, you, Stephanie, you said this has been pulled? Yes, we'll be pulling that item from the agenda on the record. All of a sudden, your night is getting much, much easier. Um, it's and better for the, the parents on the board than me. So, yeah. so just uh, for a little bit of detail on that, this is a church, and they have just recently changed the pastor. So they actually are changing their whole vision of what they want to do at the property. I met the contractor at the site for a site visit today and their whole vision has changed and it is in flux. So we are going to have a Zoom meeting this week to talk about what they could potentially do at the site and this would come back before you, but that's why that one's being pulled. Okay. Sounds like a good idea to uh, get with the architect and figure out what it's going to be and how it fits in their budget before they spend a whole lot of time. Or uh, for their beforehand. congregation to know what they want. To be yeah, that too. They're really up in the air. All right, so we'll be pulling item B and revisiting that when it, when it comes back. That brings us to item C on new business, which is Certificate of Appropriateness Major for 1111 Wisconsin Avenue. So this request is for modifications to the exterior of the existing home, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite properties and property owners. Um, so the applicant is requesting approval from HPB for a C of A to modify the exterior appearance of the single family residential structure and also to construct a new detached garage. Modifications include creation of an entry porch that's sized six feet by five inches by seven feet four and a quarter inches on the east elevation, installation of light fixtures on the west facade, installation of glass block on the east elevation, and construction of a detached garage, which would be sized 14 feet by 30 feet. And the proposed modifications are reflected in the attachment in your packet. The building is within, of course, your historic district boundaries and has been determined to be contributing. It's 681 square feet built in 1950 and has been maintained as a residential use. 
the information in your staff report contains verbatim excerpts from your ordinance, which is ordinance number 2018-57, the St. Cloud Historic Preservation Overlay Ordinance. And for anybody who wants to see a copy of that ordinance, a full copy can be obtained through the City of St. Cloud website, which is www.stcloud.org. So the Secretary of the Interior standards apply to this project. Standards five and six apply. I've got the whole listing of standards in your packet as an attachment if you need to refer to anything other than these standards, but it is standards five and six that apply. So standard number five reads that distinctive finishes, features, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize a pro property shall be preserved. Standard, actually I have six here, but it's actually, I believe, standard nine. New additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction on the same parcel of land shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old and shall be compatible with the massing, size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. And the comments here are that the proposed modification does not adversely impact distinctive features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize the property. The proposed addition does not destroy historic materials that characterize the property, and it is compatible with the massing size, scale, and architectural features of the property. Also applicable to this request is the additional criteria outlined in your ordinance. That's included as your attachment C. So criteria A through J apply in this project. I'm gonna read my comments to each one of these. In regards to setting orientation and setbacks, the proposed garage is situated such that it creates a continuous street edge and is in line with the existing building wall. Building height, the garage height is visually compatible to the existing contributing buildings in the historic district. Design styles, the garage takes its design cues from the prevailing architectural styles within the historic district. Proportion of openings. The proposed window openings are visually compatible with the openings and existing contributing buildings within the historic district. I'm gonna pause for a minute just so I can get the images up here. Rhythm of solids to voids. The relationship between solids, walls, and voids, windows and doors of a building is visually compatible with the surrounding buildings at street level. Rhythm of spacing along the street. The relationship of the spacing between the proposed garage and the house is compatible with the other buildings on each side of the street in that block. Relation of materials and textures. Materials and textures of the proposed garage, as well as the modifications on the existing building have been selected with the historic district and specifically the existing structure in mind. The roof shape, so under roof shape, the roof shape of the proposed garage is compatible with the roof shape of existing contributing buildings within the historic district and is consistent with the architectural style of the existing building. And lastly, size, scale, bulk, mass, and volume. The physical size, scale, bulk, mass, and volume of the proposed garage is compatible with the existing contributing buildings within the historic district at street level. And staff is recommending approval for the request to create an entry porch sized approximately six feet by five inches by seven feet, four and a half inches on the east elevation, installation of light fixtures on the west facade, installation of glass box on the east elevation, and construction of a de detached garage sized 14 feet by 30 feet. The recommendation for approval is based on the finding that the proposed alteration is consistent and it is consistent with the purpose and intent of ordinance number 2018-57 and complies with the requirements outlined in the ordinance. Specifically, the proposed alterations are in character with the size, scale, massing, and design of the original building in the surrounding historic district. And your attachments include the exterior alterations as well as the proposed materials for the fixtures and the door. I'm sorry, I think the casement window. Mm -hmm. So we have all that information. Does the applicant uh, here and wish to speak in regards to it? Okay. <laughs> then I'll open the floor to the board members. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the request <clears throat> to create an entry porch sized approximately six feet by five inches 
<clears throat> by seven feet, four and a half inches on the east elevation, installation of light fixtures on the west facade, installation of glass block on the east elevation, and construction of a detached garage size 14 by 30 feet at 1111 Wisconsin Avenue based on a finding that the proposed alterations are in character with the size scale massing and design of original building and surrounding historic district. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. I'll open the floor to discussion. Any members have any discussion items they wish to uh, bring up at this time? Support, against, concerns, questions? All right. I think we've gone over this uh, previously and uh, we've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. It looks like the applicants uh, worked really uh, diligently with staff. So um, if there's no questions or anything coming up, we'll go ahead and vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify likewise. The motion passes. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Finally. This is the last time, right, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's got to take a little breather over the summer, at least. So um, he's been working hard. Yep. So that brings us to uh, item D: certificate of appropriateness, major for one zero zero four New York Avenue. Okay. So I just want to point out that you have an update to that staff report. So as per all the staff reports, if there is additional information, it can be contained in, at the meeting in your packet. So we have provided you with an update. Did they get all that, Stephanie? Yes. Okay. So the request here for is for blasting of all elevations and for review of elevation changes to the one-story restaurant portion of the building. The applicant is requesting approval from the Historic Preservation Board for a C of A to blast all elevations to remove existing finishes on wall surfaces. The project has a previously issued C of A for alterations to all exterior elevations, which included the removal of stucco and lime mortar, removal of paint, repointing brick where necessary, and filling open spaces, mesh wrapping the building, and applying new lime wash. The present proposal is to use sandblasting as the method for removal of lime mortar and paint. I also have in the background here, and this is important to note, um, in your background, you'll, you'll see that on April 12th, the HPB voted to approve modifications to all elevations of the hotel, but did not include direction specifically regarding the one-story building on the northeast corner in the motion. So we've provided you with the meeting minutes from the April 12th, 2022 meeting, so you can review. You've already voted on those. But you really do need to vote, vote on these modifications as well. I've gone through all the approvals for this building, and I do not see anywhere where the one story, the portion of the building has been specifically discussed. And to keep things clean and correct, you really do need to address that. The current proposal, as you see, in your report in the handouts um, has this one story portion that I have on the overhead here. That building is, although it is built abutting to the St. Cloud Hotel, is not essentially part of the St. Cloud Hotel. It has a way to get into that one story portion, but it's really its, its own building, its own one story building that was constructed over 50 years old. So if we look at the Secretary of the Interior Standards, this building has achieved significance in its own right because of its architectural design, which is mid-century, and because of its age. So if you look at the Secretary of the Interior Standards, um, standard number four, most properties change over time. Those changes that have acquired historic significance in their own right shall be retained and preserved. So on this and the sandblasting, this is something that you really have to consider, but going through all the past approvals for this project and not seeing a specific motion, which is the legal and binding thing, is your motion, um, you really do need to address this, and this seemed like an opportune time to do it. Having said that, ordinance number 2018-57 Secretary of the Interior Standards, which is in section 3.24.8, standards number four and seven applied to the project. The first one I read to you, which is most properties change over time. Those changes that have acquired historic significance in their own right shall be retained and preserved. 
And the comments regarding that is the one-story addition on the northeast corner of the hotel was constructed over 50 years ago and has required, acquired historic significance in its own right. Number seven, standard number seven, is chemical or physical treatment such as sandblasting that can cause damage to historic materials shall not be used. The surface cleaning of structures, if appropriate, shall be undertaken using the gentlest means possible. My comments here are sandblasting, coal blasting, corn blasting, or any other kind of blasting is damage, damaging to historic masonry and should not be undertaken. So I am recommending denial for the request um, regarding modifications to the existing elevations on the one-story building on the northeast corner, as well as removal of stucco and lime mortar to remove paint through blasting of all wall surfaces. And the recommendation for denial is based on the finding that the proposed alteration is not consistent with the purpose and intent of the ordinance and does not comply with the requirements outlined in the ordinance. Be specifically, the proposed method of stucco lime mortar and paint removal is damaging to historic masonry and should not be undertaken, and modifications to the one-story building would be in conflict with Secretary of the Interior Standard Number 4. So we're suggesting, Christine, that <clears throat> it's an all-or-nothing um, approval for both items? Is that the recommendation? So... You know, the board can make whatever motion they want. <laughs> it's just a recommendation. <coughs> I um, will tell you that I did reach out to the state office to get a little bit more direction on the one-story portion of the building. So I'm going to read to you the response. Um, so changes to the fenestration pattern should be avoided as much as possible for the mid-century modern addition significantly changing the fenestration pattern by enlarging reducing or reconfiguring window openings negatively impact the integrity of design changes to the building's massing or overall footprint should also be minimized in reference in this email was some postcards showing the hotel in 1940 and 1962 and that shows you know, the differences in when these changes occurred to the building. And the existing one-story portion of the building as it is, is pretty, pretty consistent with the construction of that time period. Since then, since it was built, it's not been altered very much. Can, can I ask a question? Before I remember when we discussed this at the meeting that you were referring to, we had had some concern and had lengthy discussion about the brick, if I recall, and the cleaning of the brick. And then um, at the time it, we were given direction that had we moved in the direction that we, the board was kind of leaning towards, there was a demolition on that particular building. So we kind of went the other, opposite direction. Is that still pending on that portion of that building? Are you talking about the last meeting like or the a prior, prior meeting prior, a long prior time ago? So, that was before you were here. Yeah, that was before I was here, so I'm not really sure. But what we're talking about right now is in the last meeting, if you recall, the April meeting, uh, the proposal was actually to remove the stucco that's on the building right now because there are concerns about the structural integrity of the building. So the idea is to remove the stucco inspect the bricks, do repointing where necessary so we don't have any voids in the structure, uh, do a fiber mesh wrap to the building, and then to do a lime stucco, lime wash on the building, not cement or anything like that. So something that would still allow the building to breathe. And so after all that work, when it's all said and done, would essentially look like the building looks today. Um, that too, was something that I reached out to the State Historic Preservation Office to get an opinion on. Um, I asked them for a courtesy opinion on that, and the scope of work as it was presented at that time, they were okay with. This new scope of work, and that, that was because the removal of the stucco was going to be a mechanical, like hand-done removal of stucco. This is now talking about blasting. When you're blasting masonry, you're essentially removing that hard outer layer, layer of your brick. And so just like if we got a cut, you know, we can't self-heal, but we can heal over time. It aided, we can heal, but historic masonry can't heal. Once you, you know, kill that hard outer surface, you've compromised the brick. And so that's why 
blasting and these really intense methods of paint removal or stucco removal and all of that is really cautioned against. In answer to your specific question, Member Stark, one way we could go about this would be to have an approval for the method based on feedback from the State Historic Preservation Office. So if the State Historic Preservation Office looks at everything they're doing with this method and says, in some instances, sometimes it's appropriate, if they do that, then maybe you would defer to them and base a recommendation or you know, have an approval based on, we're only approving this if we get a letter from the state saying this treatment method is acceptable. So that could be one thing that you could do. As far as what to do with the one-story portion of the building, all I can say is that this is significant in its own right, so that's just something that you all are going to have to look at and discuss as a board. Do we have any research on any other means other than sandblasting or any other recommendations that the state would? It was presented last time, that April, sense. which is hand removal of all that material, yes. which is, it is time consuming. And um, you know, I've had conversations and looked at all the information that the applicant sent me. It is time consuming, it is messy. Um, the blasting method is much faster and it's much cleaner. So there's pros and cons, but at the end of the day, what I'm looking at is the health of the building and not damaging the building. So that's, that's what I'm primarily focused on in the recommendation that I'm putting in front of you. And then that's, that's the brick item. The other, the other recommendation is regards to the, the one-story building. And just, I think if we, if we went back and, and listened to the meeting, when we were discussing and talking about the facade treatments, we were including that one-story building in, in our discussion because it included the, uh, the screening aspect that was on the, the roof element of that one-story building. So it's always important that your intent goes into your motion because you can discuss something for three hours, but if it's yes. not in your motion, it doesn't hold. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm back here with this is if that is your intent to approve it with those alterations, despite what standard four says, that's your, mm -hmm. that's your you know, choice to do so. But you do want to have it in the motion, not just in the discussion during the meeting. So I'm a little, unfortunately, I was not here for the April meeting. Um, were the openings of the windows and doors discussed at that on that first level, that one level building? Did we agree to that being okay? Because I see that they're completely different on the new plans. From existing, you mean? What's that? From the existing condition, you're saying, yes. yes. And I think I think the focus of the discussion was just in regards to the the the, the facade okay. look overall. I, I, there wasn't really any discussion as far as uh, the changes to the one-story uh, building portion. Although the rendering did reflect those changes, and there was discussion, they did not specifically call out that one-story building, okay. and that's to. Remember, this is a legal process, <laughs> so yeah. in order to make that clean and. Act, after going back through the prior approvals and not seeing that addressed, that's why I'm bringing that to you. We want to make sure that in the future, if the applicant wants to go for any tax credits or anything like that, that the paperwork's all lined up, that everything is correct and, you know, in tip-top shape and all of that. Um, I have a question. The uh, single-story building is now red. It was not intent. It was not originally red, if I remember correctly. Well, the the building has been a couple of different colors. <laughs> I don't remember what the Coast Guard had, um, but no, it was not originally red and black like that. I don't know when that change occurred, um, but the actual form of the building and the openings and all they are true to you know, pink colors change. So, with with regards to the single story, has a brick or. Uh, whatever it is, has it already been compromised because of the uh, many layers of paint that has been placed That has on not it? been affected by the work that's been done. Okay. It still has its essential form and integrity of what was originally constructed there.
I guess I'm just confused because when you look at the, the main three-story building, what they did is very close to, to me, I can see where that would be acceptable, but the, the changes on the one story seem pretty significant altogether. I don't know if anyone agrees with me, but. Yeah. On the survey, was the one-story building noted specifically mm -hmm. different from this address, or how it was it done? It was all surveyed together as one address. It was, it was looked at as one. Yeah. So now we're looking at it as the fact that it was the 1950 addition to that, and we're wanting to separate out the 1950 addition as opposed mm -hmm. and, and recognize that. Um, and they have historically functioned separately. They, that was a purpose-built building for a restaurant. It was not actually part of the hotel. Um, it butted up against the hotel. There was an entry into it, but it was its own independent building. And then I guess looking at it from a training standpoint of what we've been talking about, um, the proposed facades and that, that they present um, <coughs> basically make it look uh, to become part of the original building as opposed to be maintaining that separate, um, if you will, addition or Identity. adjacent building to it so that you know can can cause a problem so i can understand where we're coming from that so um we've got basically two motions uh, to consider or two items uh, right. to do and that I, so i'll open I the floor i think we just need to make a decision well i'll open the floor for a motion in regards to the first item oh, chair clark you've got the applicant present yep i'm sorry okay. thank you for reminding me uh, if the applicant would like to come forward, introduce himself, and uh, provide his uh, input on this, that would be helpful before I have a motion uh, made. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Mateo Hodo, and I am the project manager for the St. Cloud Hotel. Um, so we, we started work on June 3rd. And um, Oldly World Walls and Ceilings started actually preparing the building for paint removal. And the more they worked on the building, the more they realized that if we went with chemically stripping the paint off and then washing it and then treating the building because you have to chemically treat it so that it can accept the materials that come. Besides that, there is three layers of different materials that are in between the brick and the paint. And actually in certain areas there is four layers of materials that it's between the brick and the paint. So the whole purpose of what we're trying to do is get as close to the brick as we can so that we can apply a chemical that's consolidating the brick, the mortar joints, and it's reviving it and it's making it as hard of a surface as it can be and then they're applying a mesh, and then over the mesh they're applying a lime plaster that is the same exact material as the brick and the mortar joints. So now if we went with the paint stripping method and we didn't strip as much of that compound out, that leaves more travel pattern for the consolidant chemical to go to the brick and to go to the mortar joints because if not much is absorbed there so lime almost works as a kind of like a sponge the problem with this building is that that paint that's on the outside and all those layers have actually stopped the lime brick and the lime uh, grouts to absorb water which they need and to absorb air which they need so what we're trying to do is get them to a place to where it could start functioning the same way that it was meant to function because the way that it has been done for so long, it hasn't. And we're trying to expose anything so that we can fix any cracks or anything like that. I also <coughs> shared a folder with a lot of the pictures from the discoveries uh, during their one week worth of work and the change in approach to coal blasting. And this is why we also did a little sample, that round sample right there, that was the masons prior to the coal blasting actually chipping it away with tools at first, 
because we wanted to see in certain areas where the brick was so exposed completely and the coal blasting hit it, we wanted to see the amount of damage or what it could really do. So after they did the sample, we realized, you see that yellow kind of beige looking layer that's right on the brick? That's not going to come off. In order for that to come off, they need to use a higher aggregate of coal. So this coal is a very, it's almost like uh, salt grain. Um, in order for them to use a higher aggregate, it will end up taking that and then it will take a lot of the brick facing the same way as you see in that sample. Uh, we don't want to necessarily take that layer off. That layer, um, it's probably not even an eighth thick. So we're okay if that stays on. If the other three layers that are above that are removed, then the masons feel comfortable that the consolidant will penetrate through this layer right here and actually get absorbed a good amount inside the brick and inside the mortar joints making the system okay. If we leave all those layers in there, we're actually leaving materials that are not the same as the brick and the mortar joints and the new lime plaster that's going over. So we're basically leaving um, two or three different materials that wouldn't be. And in order to take all of that by hand, they will need a tremendous amount of labor and manpower to actually do it. This is why we recommended, or we went to, and we are recommending this approach. Um, time efficiency, better product, better substrate for them to work from. Because at the end of the day, the building is going to be replastered, which means that even any defacing like that that you see in the round circle, which is, if this was exposed brick, then yes, 100%. You, you can do that because you can never bring it back. But the thing is that this cannot be exposed and it's not going to be exposed. So even in areas where it's actually spalding more like that, it's actually better for that lime because it will grab on to itself. It's, it's essentially the same exact product that is going on there to finish it. So if we go with removing this paint, we also risk having the system of the way that they're approaching it not function to the best of its ability if that consolidant doesn't get absorbed as much. And if we allow a layer in between, later on it could fail and somebody could use a reason and say, well, it failed because that la layer was there and it's not doing its job. So that's another big factor into considering this. And we all know, and we're all very aware, that coal blasting is frowned upon historic projects. And we 100% all understand that. If this project was going to be exposed brick, we wouldn't even be presenting you that option. The Is that Anyone have any questions on um, that before I move into the other one? Yes. Can you clarify? You said that one of the, that there was like a small like eighth inch layer that could remain. So, what are you talking about exactly? So look at those pictures. On one, I'm holding the coal on my hand so that you can see what it looks like. Um, on the middle picture and the one on the right, um, you see that almost like a beige color that's that's on the brick itself. Mm -hmm. like. Christine, can I go to the, is there? A laser pointer on there, I think. There. Is there? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, it does. So look, um, if we could zoom into this picture, like if I could zoom into this area right here, or this area, for you to see all the different colors of the different materials that are there before you actually get to the paint, which on some of the pictures that I did send, you can do that and you can clearly see that. Um, those layers are really what we're trying to get off. This layer right here, so this one that I'm pointing at right now, the one that looks like, it almost looks like it's a, the color of the brick, right? Okay. That layer won't come off without actually really taking the face off the brick, which means that they would actually <coughs> need uh, a more abrasive coal because it won't do the job. 
the Masons feel that leaving that won't really jeopardize their system, leaving that last layer. But to get to that last layer, we want to go with this method so that we can ensure that all the other layers are off. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, I don't know if this is normal or uh, is it possible to have them show us a test area of doing their method to see that it's not going past that yellowish layer? Yeah, that's what that's what you're looking at. And this is goes to my um, kind of recommendation it. to Vice Chair Stark is that we're getting into a technical thing that's a little bit above your skill level and having the applicant <laughs> educate you on that might not be um, really where that education okay. should come from. So if this is something that based on you know the testimony that he's giving you that you want to explore, then I think that you should rely on the expertise of the State Historic Preservation Office and the people who actually do know these methods and the various, you know, what layer you get to in XYZ. Mm -hmm. And so you may consider approving it based on only if the state gives you a letter stating that they've reviewed all of this material. Because it is getting, it is very technical and it's going to be difficult to... And I mean, it's difficult for contractors, too. When they're doing test areas, the way they have to go in and what they're stripping back to and, you know, what breaches the face of the brick and what doesn't. And to what Mateo said, this building has so many different layers that have been applied over time. That's part of the problem of what we're having at the hotel is that there's so much on there for water to get behind and get trapped in that... They, they have established that they have to do something. And that's why in the April meeting, there was an approval for them to do something. So where we are now is, how is that done? Is it done by hand? Is that less damaging? Is that done more damaging? Is it done by blasting? And just, I, you know, if it's just blasting, and this is what we're doing, we're getting down to that, you know, face of the brick and we're blasting it off, recommendations for denial. But if there's finer areas that the state can elaborate on, that might be where you want to go. Yeah, and and I mean, not all of us on the board were on the board when the original uh, discussion was on this, but even the original discussion from a structural standpoint indicated that the brick needed the uh, mesh and uh, or, or wrap, if you will, and that in order to become structurally sound. So, depending on you know what, when we start discussing and 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 that damage, if you will, to the brick, the the reality is is even if they blasted it to get to the brick, they're still having to put that mesh and they're still putting in that wash in order to bind uh, the brick to structurally make it happen. Um, so, you know, there's technical aspects, obviously, that are beyond, you know, all of us. Uh, yeah, I'm trained as a landscape architect, so it's definitely not in my wheelhouse specifically. It's even complicated for an architect yeah. who's doing this kind of work. So, so. Um, um, and go ahead, Member Jones. Yes, Mr. Chair. While I understand that we may not be sophisticated enough to appreciate all the technical issues, um, I don't know that I have any more confidence of the historic preservation officer looking at photos sitting up north in Tallahassee or wherever he's at than Mateo on site on the project touching the, the bricks and seeing the condition of them and making his analysis. I don't know what his education or technical expertise is, but I do know that there are different levels of knowledge. The historic preservation officer clearly has a lot of knowledge, but being able to make that determination from pictures alone versus going to the site and examining the the character of the the bricks, the building, uh, I I'm at a loss. And so maybe he's done that. So he does have videos which I have viewed. So but that's not like touching it. Yeah. Yeah, and that is something where if you're inclined to go in that direction, where we work with the state on some kind of a determination of that treatment option, 
I'm the eyes and ears for the building, so I could physically, physically go out there on a day that they want to do a test area in front of me. But we have been working closely together. Um, Mateo has provided a lot of that stuff to me. I have viewed it. Um, so that's, I will be present at any time that you all want to do some test areas. That would not be a problem. I can verify whatever conditions um, and articulate them to whoever I need to. But I have seen. Thank you. May, may I speak? Yeah, so, you can have the floor again. Um, Ms. Jones, the recommendation to change the approach is actually coming from the Masons, who are three times Historic Preservation Award winners for actually doing this type of work. So after they did their discoveries and got the building ready for paint stripping with a chemical approach, we discovered and we went this way to do a sample. We did the sample. We saw what the sample did, and they feel comfortable making this approach, and they wouldn't jeopardize their reputation or put that on the line if they didn't feel that that would be best for the building. Also, when we did the sample, we wanted to see how much dust it would create, whether it was environmentally safe. So I had the blasting company supply you all the information on the actual coal, on its environment, and how safe it is. And it's actually safe for someone to be close to it, and there is really no dust, because it's, it's like pressure washing it with coal going through the water. Okay. So it's being washed and... I think I think the, it's more the issue of damage to the building or concerns in regards to the brick than that. Right. But I've got yeah. so, I've got member still wanted to make a comment. So if you yes. could pause where you're at. Yes. He actually partially answered the comment in his last statement. So it is a water mix. Yes. With the coal. Yes. Okay. I know I, I have some experience with blast media, and I know that in my my industry we used certain media for certain projects. And I was also curious, Christine may be able to answer this as well. Are there other media that would meet the criteria for what the state requirement is? For example, walnut shell. But if you're using a water base, I don't know, I don't know if that's even an option. I was just curious to what medias had been looked at. This is what they recommended, Glory Blasting. Uh, they have been in business for over 40 years. They're actually quite a very high reputable company. Uh, and the recommendation came from them in order for us to achieve. I, ultimately, what we want, what I would like to achieve and what the Masons want to achieve is the best substrate to work from, right? Because they, right. they have to clean it all up and get it ready to where they can actually start building upon that. So getting us there, we feel that this would be the best way to get us there, the most efficient way to get us there, and, and time-wise and financially also. Um, I have a question. Yes. At what point, uh, with all the work that you're trying to do on the facade, are, could this building lose its contributing status? I mean, if we take it too far into the original brick, at what point is the National Registry or whatever is going to come back and say, mm, you've taken it a wee bit too far? So... <laughs> <laughs> that is the conversation that we were really having last time, and that is all the struggle that I've been going through to get all the changes approved until this point. Well, the truth of the matter is that the building was so far gone that we had to literally build it within itself, re redoing the foundation. So we're building the structure within itself from foundation all the way to the roof. Okay. And this is where the time of significance in the history of this project is just as important now as it was when it got rebuilt from the fire in 1910. The, yeah. I just had a question in regards, since, you, since you've had recommendations from your masons in regards to doing this, and we've talked about the various layers that we're talking about needing to take off, Christina, I guess from a... I guess from your viewpoint in regards to the uh, guidelines, national guidelines, would the coal blasting to be utilized to remove the outer two layers 
to the point of the beige layer that we were talking about, which is that, you know, basically that last eighth inch before they hit brick. Would that be in com compliant as far as if we were to make a motion that was that specific to allow that? And then they would have to go with the mechan an improved mechanical means for that last uh, area. I mean, is that something that could be considered, or is that something that sh really should be going back up to the state preservation office for their recommendation? I, I really think that you all should seek some guidance there, because mm -hmm. to say that you control can control the amount of blast and the amount of layers <laughs> you're getting down to, I don't know anybody that's that skilled that can even control a pressure washer sometimes to that effect. So, um, you know, you're either going to have to say we're going to go all in, but you can't dictate. I mean, who's in charge of the blaster? Who's doing the work? Yep. There's so many variables okay. there to say that you're going to get down to this little bit here is just really not realistic. Okay. So I would caution against that. But I think a safer thing is, like I said before, if you want to approve this method, you can approve it conditional upon getting an opinion letter from the State Historic Preservation Office and let them look at this material. Let um, you know the, the people who are reviewing this technical kind of stuff and know these treatment methods, let them review this, watch the videos. Again, I could be there to do any test areas that need to be done and you know provide feedback or what have you. So okay. that's just... What I think, because if you if you try to make your motion and you know all of that based on these things, like how, I mean, we're talking millimeters, you know, that's you have to be super skilled, and even Understood. somebody super skilled is. And that's yeah. that's why I'm bringing it up as as the question for that clarification. Can we make a motion to uh, wait for a letter to come from the state? This is already in process, correct? You're already speaking to them and emailing them. Do we have maybe a timeline of when we may be receiving correspondence? If back? we have to do a test area, we can probably, you're in town, right? We could probably do that within the next week or so. Yeah. Yeah, so probably toward the end of next week, we would have everything completed by. I, I would think that we could get that done. So can I make a motion to, you, do you guys do the test area? to see what the results are, a small test area, and then bring this back to the next meeting where hopefully we would have some recommendations from the state and more information from the test area that you guys find. Okay, that was your motion? That was my motion. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. And that uh, would be in July. I have a, I have a second, okay. so now we can discuss. Um, I just want clarification. That would still go to the state before it would come to us next month, correct? Yes. Okay. Basically, it's almost a motion to table. And, to and, to and table it. My motion is that we table this until then. The, we table the decision for, to request that we remove the stucco and the lime mortar as well as the paint to be achieved by the use of blasting all wall surfaces to be a small test portion based on the finding that the proposed alterations are not consistent with the purpose and intent of ordinance number 2081857. City of St. Cloud Development Code, Article 3, Division 24, Historic Preservation Overlay District. Specifically, the proposed method of stucco, lime, mortar, and removal is damaging to historic masonry and should not be undertaken. Okay. So that's a revised motion. Did you want to second. second the revised motion? All right. We can continue to discuss then. It's open for the floor for discussion. Can I? Yes. Um, can you let the board know when you're going to do that so that if any one of us can go and actually see what's happening so that we can visually, like you were talking? You can time? all not have a meeting that's not advertised. So if more than one board member shows up, that constitutes a meeting, and that would not be legal. Yeah. It, would be, um, it would be best. For you all to do that, it would have to be advertised as a meeting. We'd have to have an agenda <laughs> the whole It would be best if, be if Christina actually just, I mean, or whoever, I'm is there documenting it yes. and do it as, a, as a, a video, then the video could be shared without uh, having a uh, conflict. So is there any further discussion on this motion? All right. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify likewise. All right. The motion to table and uh, to move forward uh, for with, with the applicant to move forward with the state is taken care of. 
um, we still have one item in regards to the single story building um, that, that we need to understand the uh, I guess the the finish or the the modifications correct Christina so um, Mateo do you have want to speak in regards to the single story uh, buildings modifications to I, the facade um, I do before I speak to, to that may I ask if if we get the letter from the state sooner uh, approving this could we get it on the agenda sooner or do we have to wait until the next meeting or did you defer responsibility to me well from the standpoint we can make another motion on that if and that's what the applicants asking if uh, someone would like to make a motion to um, I'll, I'll make a motion to defer to Christine based on the information from the state to move forward once the uh, criteria is met. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second. Christina, do you feel comfortable with that motion as far as giving um, new proper direction? Yes. Okay. So just to provide clarification, if I may, if um, I provide the videos to the state and I'm present when there is a test sample done and I can convey all that information to the state and I get a uh, letter from them that is a um, kind of determination letter on that treatment method and if they say that is appropriate and that that would not be damaging to the building, then I can go ahead and sign off on it in-house. Correct. Issue, I could issue the approval letter from the board basically so it wouldn't actually be an in-house sign off it would that's, be the board letter approval yes so is that what your motion that's, was saying? yes that's okay. my understanding of her intent yes okay thank you all right all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed signify likewise nobody's opposed to anything today that's good oh. the motion passes and that gives you some flexibility there Mateo so if you would address the, uh, the restaurant elevation facade work in regards to the one-story building. Um, um. Christina, can Christine. you can you assist him to get back to the? Uh, um. Maybe. We're having a technical difficulty with forwarding the. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Um, this is the proposed elevation that we discussed on our previous meeting. This is uh, the restaurant changes are rendered there. Uh, we did discuss. Um, the the window changes and we we also discussed the facade actually being the same and making it all as one and that was the intent is was to unify all of its footprint as one in accordance with the time frame of significance being now and that has been the argument the whole time on this particular project. The restaurant has structural issues too. The way that it was built, the way that it was uh, attached to the existing building, it was done with brick columns that were not anchored properly to the building, which means that they're pulling away. Uh, it was, the roof was supported from those columns with a metal I-beam that is not the right size for that roof or that it can handle the air conditioning that's going to be up there. So structurally, there's going to be a lot of work done to that restaurant. And um, one thing that we, we wanted to do, if you're inside the restaurant, I'm, I'm, I do not know when the last time that it was open, has anyone been there? Have you eaten there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you sat there? Yes. So the windows, the way that they're designed now, um, can we can we see the other rendering, which would show the the restaurant as it is? In You're saying the photograph from the old. Uh, so no, because I had it rendered, what it would look like if we decided to keep it 
in the same window shapes as it is now. So basically, if we made no, one more. Yeah. So this is this is what what we are. Well, that's that's still a modified. Uh, everything yeah, so that I see in our packet that we have is a modified yeah. uh, mm -hmm. fenestration that you don't have the same windows in there because your front edge to New York and that existing, um, you have a much larger, large commercial panel. Um, Correct. That goes and nearly down to the the. And uh, then on Tenth Street, they're also large square. There are large square, but they're also up and above eye level. Correct. Which, so when you're sitting in the restaurant and you're looking or you're trying to look outside the window, you can't. You're going to look at the brick walls, Understood. which kind of, for a restaurant, it's nice to be able to look outside the window, and it's nice to be able to, for people to see each other, and it makes it a lot more attractive. I mean, you're sitting in the restaurant to have dinner, and you, you have a, a brick wall that you're looking at, and you have the window that's up above that. Yep. Yeah, and you're going to have him bring up the photograph. Jim, could you bring up the photograph that shows the existing condition of the building where it's painted red and black, please? There. Yeah. You passed it. There we go. Um, so if you could zoom in uh, where the porter potty is, all of those windows on that side, they're, they're so high up from the ground that you wouldn't be able to look outside the window when you're in the restaurant. And we're going through this extensive renovation that we feel it would be nice to have windows that you can look outside. And we feel that it's time that that integrates into becoming part of the hotel as it's becoming part of the hotel. So it's not going to be a, a separate entity. It's a hotel that now has a restaurant and that we want it to be um, historically recognized on all the changes from now on. And we want it to stay that long for as long as it can. Um, it would be, I had it rendered with the new renderings, but keeping the windows the same. And the two of them don't really go together. And I provided that render. Well, button. they don't go together as far as to say this is a hotel, which, again, um, I, but no, I made it just one moment. I, I just saying from, a, from our training, as far as what we had you know, just discussed, is the fact that you don't want to make this building, which was built in 1950, look like it's a portion of the historic hotel, because then you're getting, if you will, a false sense of history created. So that's where you have to understand. We're, we have to look at that from that standpoint of making those changes, because it's going to be a significant change, because you're going to have to change your masonry wall in order for that to be. You're going to have to fill in areas of existing windows now in order to create this fenestration pattern that you're, you're trying to mimic the hotel on. I understand you know, the idea from a, from a restaurant standpoint you know, the advantage of having uh, eyes out onto the public street and the uh, being able to have eyes into the restaurant, you know, are, are, are valid. So understand, I, I'm not discounting either of those. I'm just making it clear to you so you're understanding where we're coming from, from a standpoint of uh, training elements that we need to uh, keep in mind. I 100% I understand. Um, and what I was um, trying to convey is um, if you look at it, basically, architecturally wise, they kind of don't work together. And um, when it was brought into design and when, when it was done at the time, it was approved and it was done and, it, and it's there now and it looks like that now, but we're at a point that we're doing so much to it that um, we would be creating a finished product that's clashing within itself. And I've mentioned it from the very beginning that throughout this whole project, my goal is to simply be advocating the building and what the building wants and what's best for the building. And I'm simply doing that 
through all of the areas of this project, not just historically with you. And I hope that you would really consider that and, and also look at the rendering, what it would look like if it were to be finished with the new facade and to that to be maintained like that and the impact that they would have. On the previous HPB approval, it was very contemporary, which was way too contemporary, um, on the one that was approved in 2019. Uh, and that was also wrong for the building. That is why I pushed for that to be redesigned. I'm simply conveying what it wants. I have a question about the possibility of, you know, you have this nice big picture window, which is very mid-century on that. Is it possible if you did picture windows instead, where it would, you could still have the dark trim, but this way you're keeping that, that one first story would still have more of a mid-century look versus if we're trying to keep away from, like you said, the FOSS history, but still be able to keep most of what you have here. I don't know. Any other opinions on that? <laughs> um. I would have caution against that because um, you don't want to design a project for an applicant, A. You want to review what's in front of you. Yeah. But the other thing is then you would essentially be taking something that is now original and altering it to make it look like something that it never was in over 15 years of existence. Oh, I thought, okay. Yeah. I just thought because the big picture window's there. Yeah. So how does that alter? Okay, maybe I misunderstood you. <laughs> Were you saying to add picture windows along the north side of the building? Where there's a picture window, have a picture window there. The type of window, the same size. So instead of having So you would be changing openings. the configuration and the height of the windows on the north side? Would you be changing the windows on the north side? Is She's that what you're saying? The east side. The east, east side. side. The tenth, you're talking about the 10th Street side as opposed so to the no, New York. She's east talking side. about the New York east side. side. New York east side. side. So keeping the existing picture window. Uh, right. Yeah. That's what she's talking about. I don't know if you would keep the existing one, but yeah, if it's, I don't know if it's, but to have a that size window, that size casing. So basically be. keeping the fenestrations exactly what they are, but maybe if he needed a replacement in the windows for whatever reason. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I didn't think that would keep any of the original look. I Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any suggestions for the north side. I mean, the biggest problem with, is on the north side and then on the 10th Street side is just the fact that it's it's a significant alteration to the facade. Yes. And it's a complete change from historically what it is. I, I agree. like I said, I understand. I understand the desire to, to bring the windows down, but you know that's, <laughs> it's kind of an impossibility, if you will, and and keeping the historic aspect of that facade. So, um, I don't. I don't know. I I would probably say that if you have other ideas to where you know maybe, again, because we've we've talked about the fact that we have to be able to to, you know, if something is done, that it could be undone. Um, I mean, you're talking about removing masonry. You're talking about filling in spaces in order to achieve what you're doing. Could it be undone? Yes, but it's a significant alteration, um, which we would have to consider. Um, so I guess I would, I would want to see how you can maybe, you know, tie the buildings in without necessarily losing the fact that they're two separate buildings, you know, two separately timed construction buildings. I mean, I understand the idea of, of trying to, to tie it from an integration standpoint to make it feel like it's, it's together, but, you know, explore how that can be done without necessarily completely um, modifying the facade. Um, that would be kind of difficult to, to achieve if we didn't alter... Um, the windows or well, anything like that. Well, I mean, you talk about it being a restaurant, but we don't have any idea as far as how you're how you're actually using that interior space where you're saying that you want the windows for that. So the question is, is that is that seating area that actually has to have that? Does it you know does it work? I mean, 
I, I'm looking for a reason in which to, you know, if you will, allow you to do that. Um, but I also don't want to set a precedent to where, you know, we can just go ahead and start modifying existing buildings um, from what their historical architectural aspect are. Because well, it changes it changes the complete look of what that building is. This is this is the first time that we or throughout the conversations that I've had with the state as well, mm -hmm. prior to actually even getting to this point, this is the very first time that the two got separated. Understood. And it's, I'm, I'm just saying, if, if, if it's bringing to us and saying it's separated, I'm giving you our viewpoint as far as when we're looking at it from a separated standpoint, the information we need from you in order yes. to make a decision. I don't believe we have enough information tonight to actually even make a motion um, for or against it. I think it's more a matter of, of giving you advice as far as to what you need to do to bring back to us so for may, that. May I request a motion to then push this also? I push it as far as what, to the state? Or you're, or you're just saying as far as to come back? I mean, To come back on the next time that I come for the approval of the method to bring it back at that point. Yeah, I, I don't see a problem with, with that um, from a table standpoint. I don't think we need a motion for, for if we're going to table a specific item. But if you want a motion for it, we could do that. Then I would still move. So you, your 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 motion need to table this this facade discussion yes, until the next to, meeting. Okay. To July twelfth. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, I would like to know what would be brought forward in the next meeting for us to make that decision. Um, design on what it would look like finished if. Um, if the two of them, if the original building is to the new renders and what this would look like to be rendered, finished with this design right now, what the existing, the existing windows and the existing. Um, okay, so you're gonna have your architect redo that part of it? Correct. Okay. So that you can picture, you can picture better because the way that it was proposed to you last time, it was proposed in the way that it was proposed, which mm -hmm was yeah. all approved as one package, but now they're different. So now I'm going to redesign it with, with the existing building being as accepted and with this being maintained the same as it is or versus what you already have with our new proposal. Does that make sense? Well, I think so you're going to submit the, the single story. I'm going to submit to you the finished product with maintaining the restaurant the way that it is. Yeah. Yes. The windows as they are. Yes. yes. So, so essentially what you're doing, it's basically going to be a presentation as and that just like it would be for any new uh, element because we're breaking this out as a separate one. So, uh, look, you know, double check with Christina to make sure that you understand the various elements that she's going to expect from a support standpoint to bring to us, if you would. Uh -huh. I think it's important to clarify because... Can you speak into your mic? I think it's important to clarify. I don't necessarily think... There's been a couple of uses of the term, like, that whether we like the building or we don't like the building or what's going to be better because it's going to look more to the hotel. I think the problem that we're bringing up, though, is stand specific to standard number four is making sure that whatever changes are made keep the historic significance of the the, the building the single story the building sec, the single story building because it has its own historical significance versus the hotels and i think that's the what we're discussing correct okay um, i just want to make sure all right any further discussion on the motion all right the motion to table. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, signify likewise. All right. The motion to table passes. And I believe that is all that's on the uh, agenda for new business. I thank you very much, Mateo, Christine. I'll open the floor for public comment if there's any member of the public that wishes to come up and speak. I believe we're allowing three minutes uh, for that. Three minutes per person, sorry, I'll be more specific here. <laughs> so if 10 of you come up, we're not making you, you know, do a portion of that three minutes. 30 seconds each. All right. Doesn't look like anybody's rushing to the mic, so we'll move on from public comment to individual board comment. Uh, we'll start on the right. Uh, member Estill, do you have any uh, comments at this no time? No comments at this time. 
And Member Campbell? No comment. Member Bright? No. Member Horning, any comments tonight? I appreciate the, the state people from uh, coming down and meeting with us and sharing their information. I think it's been really helpful tonight. And uh, um, and it was interesting to hear about the nomination procedure. So I'm um, glad I was able to be at the meeting tonight. Great. Thank you. Member Lamont? No. Member Jones? Surprisingly, no. <laughs> All right. Well... And uh, information-wise, our next meeting was August 9th, but we, uh, during our meeting, indicated it's going to be July 12th. So July 12th at 6 p.m. is our next meeting. And I'll give Christina a moment to uh, state something before I adjourn. The very quickest um, statement that I can say is congratulations on surviving this very long <laughs> afternoon. You all did great. And the only other thing is Stephanie put these on your table in front of you. We actually have printed copies now. She gave you a stack of each, so please circulate this around if anybody approaches you asking questions about historic in any way, knowing that you're a board member, um, please share this with them. This is the first printing of it. We're circulating this around to see if we want to make any tweaks to it. So be sure if, as you look at it a couple of times, you want to see any changes. I will say that the printers did not bleed to the edge, so I already am aware that we need to make sure in the next printing that that is correct. That's why I always do a first printing to circulate around. So I look forward to your feedback, and thank you, guys. I will say I didn't provide a stack, but I have yeah. them for we you have to grab. When you, I saw several people look at me, and I was like, thank, no, no. Thank I you for the clarification. <laughs> yeah, I just got one. Thank you, everyone, for attending. This meeting is adjourned. She thinks I only know one people. Yeah. One person. <laughs>